Good afternoon. The uh, January 5th meeting of the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust will be in order, and the first item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting from the December 22nd of the minutes from the December 22nd meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Are there comments, questions, additions? Hearing none, voting please. Minutes are approved. Next item is uh, consent docket, several items. Move approval subject to individual consideration. Second. Motion and a second on the consent docket. Are there matters to be discussed separately? Hearing none, voting please. Consent docket's approved. Next item is the concurrence docket. There's one matter on the concurrence docket. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second on the concurrence docket. And, and Mr. Chairman, just drawing attention to this project because we're advertising for bid the construction of facilities that will, that will help us run the generators that we've already purchased to be placed at the Draper plant for backup power. And these are subject to the current emission rules that require us to burn diesel? Yes, sir, that's correct. Amazing. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, voting please. Concurrence dockets approved. Last item on the regular agenda is an application for an oversized sanitary sewer lift station. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve the oversized sanitary sewer lift station installation. Comment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we don't often see policy A and policy B participation improvements. This one is for wastewater. It allows us to serve a total of 840 acres in the Deer Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant service area. The land is generally east of May and north of 192nd Street. Our, our cost participation will be about one-fifth of the estimated total cost of the project. Okay. Further comments? Hearing none, voting please. Item 5A is approved. Um, are there items from the trustees? Any comments, questions? Next is general manager report, and the first one is the La Draper Lake level recovery schedule. Um, Dustin C. Grace is with us. He's our water quality superintendent. Uh, just Dustin, if you'd identify yourself, that would be great. Uh, Dustin's been forecasting for us the impacts of the like a tug of, the attack of pump station outages on uh, Lake Draper's elevations. Things look much better than they did when we first began the forecast. We still have a repair to complete on the Atoka pipeline that will help put the will, that will put the pump stations back in operation and start bringing water in from the very full Lake Atoka. Uh, but just to let you know, the forecast is quite a bit better. Uh, we're thinking we'll. Uh, be better by six or eight feet in about a year, and that will allow boats to start operating happily. Uh, we'll need another couple of feet before the boat stalls are in complete operation again. And generally, we should be back to complete normal by around November of, pardon me, not that completely wrong. June I, I of 17. Say, thank you. Mm -hmm. what, what I did is, um, what you see in front of you is the chart in the graph is we, the black dotted line is actually shows the current lake levels and we made a switch. What we did is we started making more switching and taking more out of the North Canadian Basin and trying to reserve the, the reservoirs at, at Lake Draper because of the Atoka pipeline being down because of store damage. And that's where you see that we're actually making better predictions there and with the Atoka pipeline being scheduled to come back on March 1st, so that's when it's scheduled to come back on. And we anticipate pumping the maximum capacity about 80, anywhere between 80 to 85 MGD a day to get the most that we can get out of that um, through the next fiscal year till July 1. And then at July 1, what we'll do is you see the dip there. What that is is because of the peak hour rates for next year's fiscal budget is we reduce the pumping in our, in our summer hours where we do between the hours of of 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., we, we go down to 30 MGD, but then off-peak hours would be 60 MGD. 
and that's where you see the dip in the in the in the lake levels there and then but then after those summer peak hours as we continue to ramp up to 83 or 80 mgd and so it looks like we'll you know be recovering back in june of 2017. now this is, of course does not take into the account precipitation or anything like that so this is kind of a worst case scenario and i assumed the precipitation um, equal the evaporation rates and everything so this was um, very comforting to know with it uh, with the Atoka pipeline being down the cool weather and the and the wet weather we've been having this winter um, has really helped out the occasion so this um, makes us a little bit more comfortable knowing the the lake levels of next year so we'll share this forecast with the ODBRB folks who are helping us revegetate the lake did anyone have any particular questions that I can answer at this time Thanks, Dustin. Okay, thank you. The, uh, let, me, let me ask a question about, about, about this. The um, on this lake level thing, where would the where would the lake have been before? We started to refill it the last time. The lake, was, the lake was quite down quite a bit lower. It was in the low 160s, I believe, when we, when we actually started to refill. Craig, back in the um, back in the drought and everything, it was actually yeah, it was actually lower than what was predicted here. Marsha is correct. It's back in the in the 160s and everything. And the way I predicted where the lake levels would have been is I took the average demand of what we actually pumped in 2011 and 2015, uh, 2014 the actual what we pumped out of the lake then to right. be able to treat and that's where those projections took it down to around 11 1170 uh, but in the drought it was in the 1160 so we we were still comfortable to know that we could still operate with them but it wasn't it was you know we got lower than what we were so so, so. even this current situation is not going to take it down to where it was before. No, sir. What we're, I'm is anticipated around 1172, 1173 is what um, you know, kind of projecting. You know, because we're right now we're averaging about a foot a month. Um, so I, I went back and took the last three months and I averaged together, and it's basically about a, a foot a month that we're losing um, out of Draper. And so I forecasting that into March is is around 1172, 1173 in that area where we see. Um, the lake levels drop, and then at that time we should start to see the lake levels rise. Um, and of course, if we see some early, some early rain and everything in March and everything, that will help out as well. So, okay. thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This question more is more for the general staff. You know, our, the, the concerns we had earlier about problems that we were having in in um, the repair area is have those problems been worked out? access to the right to the damage side we, we have some some challenges with regard to access to the sites for repair uh, we uh, Patricia Mann had been from our office had been working with the US Attorney's Office to get permission from the tribes to do those emergency repairs that permission was subsequently withdrawn that's one of the issues we're going to visit with them with you about uh, next week It would seem like with the, in a situation where there are, the, the repairs truly are emergency and they truly are to a water supply line for a city the size of Oklahoma City that um, we ought to just go fix it and let them do whatever they're going to do. Let them defend the fact that they're not letting us fix it. We ought to just go fix it. Well, but our issue is more of been getting the plans done and, and getting the contractor in place on this. Okay. And so now we're in all that. But I mean, that, that, that's, that is uh, at some point it borders on the ridiculous that you wouldn't let somebody repair a line that they had a right to be on because of their easements that are in, currently in existence. It would just with I just I think it's time to bring that kind of conduct to a head and just go ahead and fix it. Well, one of the one of the issues is that the some of the easements have expired, and we have we initiated uh, negotiation for extension of those easements and for permanent easements well before they expired, and have not been able to get any traction from the BIA. <clears throat> All right, I just uh, I know that doesn't sound like um, maybe it doesn't sound prudent, or maybe it doesn't sound like a lawyer, but but. 
there's a limit to this foolishness. Well, I, th I think and when, that, and when they don't, when you're when you're not being prevented from repairing something that is a water supply for a city the size of Oklahoma City, I think at some point we have to take a much more aggressive stance. Well, I think that that's part of the presentation we would like to make to them in our fair okay. meeting, okay. Uh, and try and get that. Issue put aside and then continue to negotiate the permit will, issue. I will hold my breath. Next item <laughs> is uh, utility bill changes. So this month, customers will get a flyer that, ex that shows them changes being made to the utility bill, which we believe will um, result in some telephone calls we're preparing for, but also in the long run make it uh, more, easy, more readily understood by people who don't read the bill every month. Um, the new bills will start going out in February. We'll let you know when they when it actually occurs. We'll talk visit with you about that. It's your first meeting in February. In the meantime, um, Alan, Alan, so Alan McDonald is is our champion for this work, along with Debbie Reagan. He's here if you have questions of him. Key thing on the change is we're adding a QR code so that those of you who can use codes to pay bills will be able to. See that that's a new service for customers and otherwise we're happy to answer questions I like the look of it mm -hmm. okay. any questions or comments about the new bill format what what do we anticipate to be the response rate are we expecting to hear from two percent of our customers over this do we have any idea yeah, I, I, Alan, we hear from about a hundred about 250 percent of our customers every year by phone mm -hmm. so go ahead. we we hope with with sending out the the flyer this month and then we're we're also doing an email campaign as well to let the email customers know what's going to happen. A week or tell that, but we we do certainly see hope we will see an increase in calls. But hopefully by doing that, it'll be to a minimum, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe a couple hundred calls uh, over a week's period. Hopefully, okay, which is a relatively small percentage yes, then sir. of overall customer. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I believe we're fin oh, citizens to be heard. Are there citizens to be heard? Hearing none, we're adjourned.